Hello, I'm Dr. David Morehouse. I'm a PhD medical researcher, and I'm a former U.S. Army Special Operations Officer. I've been a military trainer for well over 40 years, and since 2003, I've been involved in the process of training soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines in the art and science of operational medicine. At one time, my company, 2SRG, supported the training of over 23,000 warfighters each year, and as such, we became one of the largest training companies in the world. This was a massive training footprint, which presented a great opportunity for me to not only directly influence training, but also for me to see how warfighters reacted to medical devices in virtually every possible type of scenario. As new devices were fielded over the last 15 years, I was not only able to see them in action, but my staff and I watched carefully to see how individuals used them, what they liked and what they disliked about the devices. Recognizing we had this ability, many of the medical device manufacturers asked 2SRG to test and evaluate their devices to provide them with valuable feedback and performance analysis that would not be available to them through any other level. Companies such as Metaphor, C2 Associates, North American Rescue, Tactical Medical Solutions, the University of Toledo, the Defense Medical Material Program Office, and the National Center for Medical Readiness, to name a few, hired 2SRG to find the strengths and weaknesses of a number of new medical devices. We performed detailed performance testing on everything from hemostatic agents to tourniquets, pelvic stabilizers, chest seals, and of course, interosseous devices of all types. Now, throughout all those years of observing, testing, evaluating, and watching the operational use of these devices, you develop a short list of favorites, and that is why I'm here to talk to you today. I want to talk to you about my favorite sternal interosseous device, which is the Ping Medical Fast Responder. Bearing in mind I have seen every type of interosseous device manufactured and in use today, and I have deployed those devices into live patients. Many years ago, I came to the conclusion the FAST series of interosseous devices is the one you should choose if your patient requires interosseous infusion. And this is the FAST responder. Manufactured by Ping, it is, in my opinion, the finest interosseous device in the market. This device comes in three styles. The FAST responder, seen here, designed for emergency medical services pre-hospital use, as well as for clinical use in hospitals. However, there is also the FAST combat and very soon the FAST tactical. All of the devices are identical in form and function, the only difference being the color scheme and the packaging used. This family of sternal interosseous devices is, in my opinion and my experience, without question, the simplest and safest to use in any setting. It is safe to use. There is no risk of overpenetration. The device is engineered to find the appropriate depth every time using nothing more than user-applied force necessary to penetrate the cortical bone and seat the tip of the infusion tube into the manubrium. That is it. No assortment of needles, no drills, no lights, no batteries, no guessing your depth or trying to find reference markings on needle shafts in limited visibility or in moving ambulances. All of that goes away when you pull this device from your aid bag or in your ambulance and go to work. It is a single-use instrument, so there is never a risk of cross-contamination. It is fast, rapid vascular access. A well-trained user can gain vascular access within a few seconds, and once the fluids are moving, studies show that medications to the heart take less than 30 seconds to reach their intended target, and that is fast under any measure. It is effective. It can be used as a bridge to a central venous line or as a temporary replacement for a CVL, and it is multi-purpose. Any medications or blood products that can be given intravenously can be given via the fast responder. It is versatile and can be used in adolescents from 12 years of age and older, and it is secure. When properly deployed, the flexible tubing, the strain relief loop, and the target foot hook ensure that the infusion tube will not become dislodged. The tubing is actually flexible and flexes with the patient's skin, unlike other rigid needle devices that can bend and break from too much lateral shear. This device is highly adaptable and can be deployed into a patient while flying in a helicopter or moving in a ground ambulance or from a hospital bed, a gurney, or a stretcher. Wherever you are, this device can be successfully deployed to help save a life. And in prolonged care situations, this device can remain in place for up to 24 hours. The application protocol is as simple as it can be, just six Ps. Position yourself relative to the patient at the patient's head. Placement of the device is also simple. Use the sternal notch indicator on the target foot and align it with the sternal notch on your patient. 
then push the device into the cortical bone of the patient with user-applied force, pause just long enough to hold the target foot in place while you gently pull back on axis, leaving the target foot and infusion tube behind on the patient. And finally, prepare, which means to connect to the fluid source of your choice. Depending on your medical direction and control, there are some other optional procedures available to you as well, such as aspirating marrow to determine you are in fact in the marrow of the manubrium, and flushing the tubing with saline to clear the line before hooking up your fluid source. I am often asked about interosseous flow rates. Now, to be clear, the flow rates are equal to those of any intravenous access. For example, the gravity flow rate is equal to 30 to 80 milliliters per minute. The pressure infused flow rate is equal to 120 milliliters per minute. And a syringe bolus is equal to 150 to 250 milliliters per minute. Now, all of those are far more than you should ever need, but the flow rate is there if you need it, and that's good to know. This is absolutely the most precision engineered, simple to use device on the market, and while none of the IO devices are designed to be used on patients with local anesthesia, the fast responder is, in my opinion, the least painful of all the devices I've ever used or seen used on a patient. I've personally seen a man under a battlefield dose of ketamine sit up and scream when a tibial I.O. device was used on him. And while pain is a relative thing, uh, most all of the patients claim that the pain level they receive upon use of the fast is between a one and a three. As a researcher, I've heard a number of myths about interosseous infusion, and over the years I've addressed many of those myths, such as you cannot use it during CPR, or the flow rates are too low, or it's too hard to acquire IO access, and I assure you that none of these are true. Using the FAST device, CPR compressions need to be stopped only long enough for you to position yourself at the head of the patient and push the device into the bone of the manubrium. Once that has occurred, compressions can begin again while the rest of the procedure is followed, including aspirating and flushing if you so desire. If the patient is on any kind of an automatic device, such as a Lucas or an Autopulse, simply pause the device long enough for you to take 10 to 20 seconds to deploy the fast and then start the device again. Acquiring IO access could not be simpler. All you do is unpack the fast device, position yourself at your patient's head, locate the sternal notch, align the device, and push. The rest is simply procedural. Hook up your fluids and get the desired flow rate established. Everything left behind with the device is a sharp or rubbish. You have nothing to pack up and carry along for the next use, and better yet, nothing to sterilize before the next use. Again, no batteries, no drills, no lights, no needles to get wrong, and I have seen evidence of the wrong needle in the wrong place, with fluid being introduced into the anterior mediastinum because a humeral head needle was used on the sternum and that needle was drilled completely through the manubrium. Why would I ever want to take that chance if I knew it could happen? Personally, I would not, and many on my staff feel exactly the same way. So pick up and use the safest, and in my opinion, easiest to use, and most precision engineered interosseous device on the market. The Ping Medical Fast Responder.